This is Steve with Electra Resales and today I've got a short video outlining a new product that we have for sale on eBay and uh, Tindy which we've called the Tracer. It's actually a, a component tester or possibly a curve tracer that you hook up to a scope uh, via these couple of BNCs here, uh, X and Y. And then using the uh, red black uh, test jacks on the top you can apply a component or you can use uh, banana plugs and flying leads with it. On the sides a, a power jack, uh, it's a small plastics box about 4x2x1, by by uh, it's quite light, probably weighs well, a few ounces only. Um, along with that we're also supplying the power supply that goes with it, um, this is a small uh, plug block, just plugs into the wall, the other end plugs into your uh, tracer box, and also uh, a couple of um, uh, BNC, uh, BNC. <laughs> a couple of banana plugs to uh, crocodile test clips. It's about a 15-inch test uh, test lead there. So without further ado, let's uh, hook it up to the scope and see what we can do. Uh, here we are. I've now uh, hooked up the test box, the tracer, to my uh, Beckman. It's a 20 megs dual tracer scope, very old and uh, still in good condition. Still does the job. And we've got it set in XY mode, and uh, the uh, tester is hooked up to uh, the X, well, channel 1, channel 2 or X and Y inputs and the power supply is over here coming in on one side and now we have the two test jacks there. I've rummaged up a uh, bucket of test components as you can see there's all sorts of stuff in there uh, rectifiers, capacitors, potentiometer, uh, even some transistors. So what we're going to do is show you how to use this unit in conjunction with an oscilloscope. Okay just before we get going with doing the testing Let's have a quick look at how I've got my scope set up. It's a Beckman 20 MHz dual trace scope. And as you can see over here, I've got the time base set to uh, XY. The coupling for the inputs is set to XY for both. And down here you can see where I've got cables connected to the two inputs. On this particular scope, channel 2 is the XY mode. So I've got that pushed in. Obviously your scope may differ slightly, but most scopes have an indication on the front panel as to how to set up in XY mode and you just have to follow along to get there. Okay? Okay, let's do some testing and I'm going to start by uh, looking at this rectifier. I believe it's a silicon rectifier. And if we hook it up to the, the tracer, we don't know if it's a good diode or a bad diode, but when we hook it up we get the uh, characteristic L shape that you'd expect from a good diode. Basically when it starts conducting you can see that the uh, change in, in shape occurs and that's because the current's flowing at that point. If it was a direct short, you know, the diode was shorted down, we'd see a vertical line like that. And if it was open circuit, we'd see a straight line like that. So because we're seeing the characteristic L shape, which shows that conduction has taken place, we know that uh, this diode is in good shape. Okay, we've got another type of diode here and you may notice that the horizontal portion of this trace is a little bit longer than that that we saw with the silicon rectifier just now and that's because what I've got here is an LED. You can even see that the LED is actually glowing at the moment and uh, that's because the trace is actually just tickling the LED and bringing it on. But what you're seeing on the horizontal portion of the trace here is a slightly longer trace before we actually get switch on and that's because LEDs typically have a, a higher switch on voltage. If we compared it to the trace that we had with the silicon rectifier, we'd see that we were switching on a little bit lower voltage with that particular rectifier. So what we've got here is a device that's been able to characterize for us diodes, typically silicon rectifiers, Zener diodes, and now LEDs. Okay, next up I've got a, uh, another diode here. Looks like a silicon rectifier, but it has no markings on it. I don't know what it is. So let's connect this to the uh, tester and see what we get. Okay, we have a slightly uh, different characteristic curve to that that we saw just now. Uh, we're seeing the, uh, the same uh, L shape here, which means that we're getting forward, forward voltage switch on, but we're also getting this little tag up here, which tells me that this is probably another form of conduction, and this is typically seen with a Zener diode, and so I know this is a Zener diode. With further testing, I'd actually be able to characterize this diode and know exactly what its turn-on voltage was, and therefore we'd know what the uh, diode was useful for. So we've been able to see that uh, silicon rectifiers give us this characteristic L shape, 
and xenodiodes give us this kind of characteristic knee or chair shape. So we're able to not only have a look at these devices, but we also can characterize them. Okay, we've got another type of diode here. And you may notice that the horizontal portion of this trace is a little bit longer than that that we saw with the silicon rectifier just now. And that's because what I've got here is an LED. You can even see that the LED is actually glowing at the moment. And uh, that's because the trace is actually just tickling the LED and bringing it on. But what you're seeing on the horizontal portion of the trace here is a slightly longer trace before we actually get switch on. And that's because LEDs typically have a, a higher switch on voltage. If we compared it to the trace that we had with the silicon rectifier, we'd see that we were switching on a little bit lower voltage with that particular rectifier. So what we've got here is a device that's been able to characterize for us diodes, typically silicon rectifiers, xenodiodes, and now LEDs. Okay, we've been looking at a variety of diodes, uh, the silicon rectifier, the xenodiode, and an LED. Here's another diode, as you can see on screen at the moment, uh, there's the characteristic L shape, but this time we're looking at a uh, three-legged diode, and this one happens to be a, called a transistor. And what I've done is I've hooked up the tracer between the collector and the base on this uh, transistor, and as you can see, pretty characteristic uh, silicon rectifier type of uh, trace. Now if I go from being connected between the collector and the base, and I actually go and connect between the emitter and the collector, we see the same style of trace, but notice how the uh, switch on voltage is a lot higher. And we're still getting the characteristic rectifier uh, template that we had earlier. And if we go between effectively the emitter and the base, we now get our characteristic xenodiode. So here we are, we've got a way now of characterizing not only diodes, but also transistors, and if it's unmarked, have a good idea not only of the lead outputs by noting the characteristics on screen between uh, emitter base, collector emitter, and collector base, but we can also work out things like breakdown and breakdown voltages. So, diodes, transistors, LEDs, all easily tested using the tracer. Okay, let's have a look at some capacitors. I've got an electrolytic here. It's uh, 47 microfarads at about 50 volts. Let's hook this up to the, uh, the tester and have a look at the trace that we end up with on the screen. Hmm, looks like a dead short, but I'm actually going to do this. And what we see is that as we uh, change our volts per division, we actually have an ellipse. And the size of this ellipse varies depending on the value of the capacitor under test. Now this was a 47 microfarad electrolytic. As you can see, the ellipse is actually quite narrow. And in fact, when we first put it together, it looked like a short. So let's decrease the value of the capacitance that we've got. And here I've got now a 10 microfarad capacitor. So let me hook this up. And what you see is that that trace is a little bit wider and I actually um, reduce the voltage and as you can see here as I take it down to approximately uh, 10 millivolts per division you've almost got a full circle. You may also have noticed at the start that the trace was moving and that's where the capacitor was just charging slightly. If we take this off and we go to a uh, non-polarized capacitor is what I just found. It's a uh, 0.022 microfarad capacitor. Now hook that up and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that and we're now around at one volt per division and what you can see is that the ellipse is pretty squashed. The size of the ellipse and the direction in which it takes is governed by the size of the capacitor. So as the size of the capacitor is increasing so the ellipse goes more vertical and the circle becomes more circular as it decreases so it becomes flatter and more elliptical as you can see in this example here. So here we have a way of looking at capacitors. Obviously if it wasn't a good capacitor and it was a direct short we'd be seeing that and if it was open we'd be seeing that. So what else can you do with this tracer? We've looked at semiconductors, we've looked at capacitors, 
We've looked at diodes. How about one of these? It's a potentiometer. This happens to be a uh, 10k potentiometer. I'm just going to connect the tracer between the center wiper and one of the outside pins. And when I do that, we see that, uh, I'll just show that on screen, there we are. I've actually got it turned fully anti-clockwise, so it's basically exhibiting a dead short at the moment. But as I turn the wiper of the potentiometer very slowly and increase the resistance, what you actually see is that that trace starts to move. And this is a great way of determining whether the pot has uh, dead spots or whether there's a nice smooth change. And now I'm fully on the other side, I'm fully clockwise over here. And as I just uh, move it back very slowly, you'll see that the trace, as we approach the uh, anti-clockwise position, there we are, is vertical again. Nice way of characterizing potentiometers. What about regular resistors? For sure. You can have a look at those as well. Here's a 10K resistor. And that gives us, I think if you remember on the potentiometer, when it was at full uh, clockwise, which would be about 10K, that's about where we saw it. So again, you can test resistors. And again, if it was uh, shorted, it would be showing a full straight vertical. I've got a slightly higher value. Uh, this is a 15K, so not much more. But you can see it's over a little bit further. And again, that gives you the ability to test resistors. OK, so we've had a look at quite a lot of um, active and passive components. The last thing I'd like to have a look at is something um, that's known as a uh, coax cable. It's got a PL259 on the end of it. And if we were to just have a look and see if the uh, ca coax cable here is shorted, we can use the tracer quite easily to do that. I just want to, I'm basically going to connect the centre conductors together like that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to bring that on screen. Basically, I've got both centres uh, connected. So now I know that uh, we're shorting, basically, as we expect to. But what about if I connect it to the uh, centre on one end and the outer on the other? And basically, we're seeing an open circuit image there, which tells me that we don't have a problem with this cable, and it's a good cable. So there you are. It's a good way of checking out cables as well, and obviously windings on uh, transformers and motors, etc. If we want to have a look at those, we can do that as well. As I say, it's called the Tracer. It's a very simple unit. It's available from Electro Resales on eBay and Tindy. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.